Hey everybody, welcome back to another video's channel and today we want to see a way to implement fixes that haven't landed yet, they weren't released yet, but maybe exist or maybe own fixes you applied while trial and error debugging through npm packages, your own things in the node modules folder and how to patch these packages in the easiest way. No matter which package manager, we'll take a look at all of them from the classic npm all the way to bun uh, and see when it makes sense, what are the implications and how it works. Here we go. So yes, every now and then you might have heard, okay, just patch that package locally. And in this video, we have a look what it means. And as I said before, also taking a look at the ups and downs. Uh, and we start with a real world use case. Because sometimes it might be that there is a bug in a package. Yeah, that can happen in NPM package, in node modules. And maybe it's fixed already, but not released yet. Maybe there is an open PR pending, but it's not merged. Or maybe you are like, hey, I have a feeling I should dig down that myself. I have an idea what I'm doing or maybe not. I'm trialing and erroring around. And then you found a fix that works for you. You might propose it as a fix, but in the meantime, your app should start running and working again as intended. So let's see how we can achieve that in like an actual real world use case and then have a look how it works in every single package manager and eventually talk about the consequences, what is good about it and what might be a problem for the future. So let's start with our little demo project. And this application, the code is also linked in the description, we have a use case which is actually happening in the real world. So in here we use the Nitro framework as part of Nuxt, very nice server tool code, definitely have a look into that. Uh, and in here we use an experimental feature, so it is the database integration with DB0, which is another UnJS package. And we want to connect to a PostgreSQL database here with, well, some options, but they don't really matter. Because if we start a project, in my case here with PMPM, but we do it with all the different package managers in the future, we see an error here saying, oh, damn it, syntax error, the requested module PG does not provide an export named client. The weird part is we don't have any code referring to PG or client. In our app.view, we just call the uh, API that we've registered in server API over here. And well, in the test one, we just execute some SQL, but we never call PG or client, which gives us the hint, well, that might be a problem from the module, the experimental thing we're using. And of course, experimental features might have some rough edges here and there, but usually it should work fine. So let's look into what we can do here. And well, the first instinct would be, why not Googling it, right? Why not having a look if there are other people experiencing the same issue and if there's a solution, that's what we'll do now. As soon as we're Googling the arrow, we see already, okay, we have how to properly import PG into my TS file, which is a whole no Postgres issue. And then, we see already an UnJS issue here, which is part of the DB0 library. And somebody apparently had the same issue. And the best part is it also sees like, here's a PR maybe fixed by hashtag 63. So let's see uh, what's happening. It's also connected here. Okay, somebody provided a nice reproduction, always a goodie. So whenever you port it, reproduction is super helpful. How it works, also same idea. And of course, the are some problems. It's the same error message we've seen before. Very nice. And uh, someone even said, okay, here might be a fix. And we have the PR here, which says update import to work with ESM. Lovely. So with this, it should work fine. I think even the author back here, yeah, he says after running a bug fix on provider production, I can verify the issue. It's resolved. So we have a clear bug fix here for that case. The question is, why is the whole thing not merged? And the answer is a bit Further below where maintainer Puya, Pi0 answers, sorry for delay, but they need further testing to see either prefer this or the import star as syntax. I understand it fixes Nitro builds. In the meantime, I suggest to use PNPM patch. So the whole point here is saying, okay, there is a bug fix. The maintainer understands it is a bug fix, it, but it can't land yet because there might be different or other solutions. And while hastily, uh, accepting a PR that could also mean more maintenance burden or breaking change that you might not necessarily want. In the meantime, the maintainer here suggests, hey, why not patching it locally? So let's have a look how we would do that. And we start very simple with the manual part. Back in our code, we can say, okay, let's maybe find the respective file in the node modules and just patch it manually first to see if it works. And second, well, it's probably the easiest way. Also, if you don't have a fix to apply, but more like, let's try to look locally. Let's see how it works. Okay, so we have a look in our browser. We we'll see in the PR, it should use PG. It removes client. It seems also very important. We can ignore all the 
the TypeScript stuff here because TypeScript isn't included in the MJS files anymore, only in the TypeScript files. So that's build time. And then we have to add the PG here in front. So let's do this in our code. What we can do here is we say uh, import PG. We don't import client here anymore. And instead of new client, we say PG.client and the whole thing is fixed. And now what we can do is we can start the dev server again. We can have a look if the error is resolved. And that's it. No, no error anymore on startup time. So apparently we resolved the issue and now our app is working again. But there's one big problem. The big problem is that, yeah, now you fixed it for yourself locally, but as soon as you push it to the CI, it will fail. As soon as your coworkers, or maybe you're not a machine, or you in a week after clearing the dependencies again will reinstall it, you'll be like, why is that error there again? Why is it, why is it not working? So we need a way to reliably document uh, and save also in a version control manner the changes we do to packages just for our own sakes. Because if you still remember the good old times hacking around in PHP files and vendors, maybe some of you is still a, a thing nowadays, this is really painful because you never know when things change and then when versions come and override and I don't want to get started into that. So let's have a look how to do it in a nice and proper way. I mean, doing it manually is a good start because then you can still see like, okay, everything is fixed. Now let's save it. Now let's, well, version control it. And we start on how to do that with plain NPM. And for this, I fully remove all the node modules here because we start plain plain and plain sheet with NPM I. So we install them with NPM. Also very important, of course, for all the guides. If you use yarn, if you use PMPM, bun, then check the respective chapter marks because these are the important parts for you. You don't have to do it with NPM if you use a package manager that's different and the other way around too. You can just use it for the package manager you need. And in the end, they will all work very similarly except NPM because NPM has no way, I can spell that already, no way to natively, like out of the box, apply packages to packages. Actually, same for the old Yarn 1, but for the newer Yarn versions, for PNPM and also for Bun, uh, that's possible. So with NPM, you need a little bit of help. The workflow in NPM is a little bit different to most of the other package managers except Yarn 1, as I mentioned already. Um, and what we have to do here first is actually applying the changes. So now that I reinstalled all the node modules, we have to search the file again, but we know which one it is. We go in here, we apply the same thing. So we just import PG here and use PG.client. And that's the whole thing here. And then we start using NPX to execute a package. And we want to execute a patch package. So that's a, a whole module that basically allows us to create a patch file from, oh, what's the current version? What did I change? Uh, and we have to specify the package. So to figure out the package, well, we see it's in node modules DB0 here. So we just use DB0. And of course, we have to allow installing patch package. That's fine. It will create a temp folder and so on and so on. The nice thing is it will straight away also allow us to create an issue if you would run npx patch package DB0 create issue saying, hey, there is a problem. Here's, I fix, uh, here's how to fix it. But it's very important not only say, oh, that's the code I fixed. Also showing maybe reproduction on why there, this problem is, what we've seen in the previous issue. Um, and also making sure that the code is, well, it, it might work for your case, but it might not work for all cases, but it's still a good start. So creating an issue when fixing a bug yourself is always a good idea because probably there are more people having that issue. But back to patching a package, we see here very clearly what happened. We had a temporary folder, we had uh, installed DB0 with the version, we had a diff, and then we have that patches folder. So if we take a look here in patches, we have the DB0 plus 014 patch. And here we see what we've seen more or less in GitHub, right? Like we have that and we have this. So we see our changes here. And the good part is now they can be installed. You can version control this file and you definitely should. And there is one more thing to definitely do because besides adding the whole package, committing the whole thing, in your package JSON, what you really want to do here is make sure that in your post install script, it's not only Nux prepare in here, but before you really want to run patch package because otherwise your patches won't be auto applied, right? And then we say, and run next prepare. Otherwise this patch will not be applied when you check out the repo, when you uh, check out your coworker stuff and so on and so on. And of course you want to make sure to also NPMI patch package. So it's really uh, installed and part of your application. It can be in dev dependencies. It doesn't have to be in dependencies, but it's up to you. 
uh, and then we're all good and things will work. And then we're good to go. And now when we check out the repo, when we do like NPMI, then also patch package will be executed. We'll say applying patch patches. We've seen it right here, right? DB001.4 and it will all work. So that's a very important key part when patching packages with NPM. I commonly don't use NPM in most of the projects, but I know there are lots of projects still using NPM. So that's an important part here. And now let's take a look at Yarn 1 because it's still a popular Yarn version and uh, it might be worth checking it out too. And in Yarn, the procedure is very much the same. You just have to use Yarn instead of um, NPM, right? You have to run Yarn to install the temp dependencies and so on and so on. But there's one more thing. You need to install another dependency because otherwise the post install part will not run. Because when using Yarn, your post install step with patch package, well, that will not run anymore because Yarn says, okay, all the post install info about what you're using and so on, it's, it's taking lots of calls, it's not necessary, lots of CPU cycles. So what you need to do is you need to install a dependency, and I'm not kidding, it's called uh, Yarn at post install dash post install. So this dependency basically re-executes script that you define here on post install once again. So you really make sure that the whole thing will also work on post install and your patches are actually applied. That's the main part with Yarn because the rest is still the same as we have NPM. So just follow along the NPM guide, go maybe back to the chapter if you want to, as you did before, and then add also with Yarn add post install, post install, and you're good. That's also for Yarn 1. If you use Yarn 2 and above, we'll have a look into that now. After removing all the dependencies again, we do the same thing now with Yarn and most importantly with Yarn 2 and above. So we have Yarn 4.3.1 at the time of recording the newest Yarn version and we want to now patch our package. So what we have to do now is we use the native or like package manager native command called Yarn patch. And if you execute it like that, it won't work because we need the name of the package. So we call it Yarn patch DB0. And now the whole package manager was saying, okay, sure, it's extracted, it works, you can now edit it. So what you wanna do is you wanna open that folder here, either with VS Code, so the easiest would be just writing code in your uh, command line, then open it in your window, uh, and then make your changes there. And then eventually, as the whole uh, terminal says, you run yarn patch commit dash s, and just commit the whole thing, and yarn will store a patch file. So let's see how that will look like in the other window. When opening the package, it might look weird, but this is actually the content of, in this case, DB0. And what we can do is we can have a look. We have connectors, we have PostgreSQL, we have the MJS file, and we know what to do. Uh, here, pg, here, pg.client. We save the whole thing, and then we can close it and jump back to our actual window. And what we run to run is, as I said before, yarn patch commit dash s with the file name or with the folder name it's set here. And then we're good. So if we have a look now, there is no patches folder itself, but there is a .yarn folder. And in here we have patches and there we have the DB0 patch we've seen so before. So the whole thing will work as expected. It's just a different folder and it all works natively. You don't need an additional package. And one more thing to notice is if you take a look at resolutions here in the package.json, then Yarn also set up a resolution to indicate that the package db0 at npm, so from the npm registry, is actually patched. So you will use db0 npm at a certain version, and then you will apply a patch based on your project root.yarn patches, so what we've seen before. So in here, we also have a transparent indication what is actually patched and what isn't. So the package JSON already tells us which packages we might have to take a look into and which patches will be applied. So now we've seen how it works with Yarn 2 and above. So let's take a look at how it works with PMPM, which is quite a common and popular package manager nowadays. After once again nuking my dependencies, installing them with PMPM, it doesn't matter if shamefully hoist true or not, it's both is fine, of course, then we have a new scenario again. So here we also use the local PMPM patch a DB0 command, so PMPM patch, once again, says, oh yeah, we need a package name. We add db0 here. And the idea is pretty much the same. We once again get a new temporary folder. We can uh, edit it and I will do it real quick because you've seen it multiple times already. And then once we're done with the changes, well, we can also commit that by running pnpm cat patch commit with exactly this folder. And then pnpm will resolve the whole dependency tree again. We'll double check if that affects anything. And very important, if we once again take a look in the package JSON under PMPM here, we have the patch dependencies also indicating the patch 
uh, file that is used. And here we see we have a top level patches folder now, which I think is a bit more discoverable than the .yarn one. And in our DB0 patch, we see the same thing we've seen all before. Lovely, right? Then let's have a look at the last package manager and then we talk about the consequences and implications because these are very important. Don't skip for that. You might skip into package managers, but not that chapter. Okay. Um, let's take a look at bun. As you guessed, the dependencies are nuked again. We have now a bun log file. Just ignore the other log files here because they are just left over from the other runs. And here now we can also run the bun patch command. It is pretty new. So if you see, hey, script not found patch, you might have to update your bun. You can upgrade bun by just running bun upgrade, of course. So that's pretty straightforward saying, hey, 1116 is out and I was on 1030. So it's it's been a while. Take a look at dependencies and then run bun patch and we'll see, hey, there is a missing package to patch. So bun patch would work, but of course we need to type in the package, which is db0. And here it says, oh, okay, final found. Well, because we have to install uh, the dependencies, of course, again. And when running that command, then we'll see, okay, fine, just patch it by actually editing the following folder. It will not give you a new folder, so you can edit that in place, and then you're on bun patch commit. So this will also happen once again. I'll not, I'll spare you to change that file, and I will see you when I commit that file in for you just a second. And after that, we also see once again a patches folder here. We have the same patch as we've seen before once again, and in our package JSON, well, we noticed that we also have here a patch dependencies entry saying db0 is patched to that version. And that is how it works for bun. So if some of you noticed that, well, the bun patch command didn't work, just update it as we've seen before, and then things will go well. But there might be another issue because now all good, CI will run, all fine. You've added some changes to a package, but well, first, you can't easily automatically upgrade the package version anymore. You always have to check, hey, can I throw away my patch? Do I have to reapply it? Maybe some code in that file changed and you have to update your patch. So it's a bit of maintenance burden from your side, which means your app is good now, but for every package update, you have to check. And there is another problem because, well, in this case, if the maintainer says, hmm, okay, I'm not 100% sure you can patch it. And at some point it should just work without the patch. That's really cool. But if you take it in your own hands and saying, oh yeah, I have a really cool fix for that scenario. And the maintainer might decide, yeah, it's a nice fix, but it doesn't work for a majority of cases. It might work for your case, but not for all the others out there or for a small part, not and so on, so on. Then you might have code relying on your fix that you have to rewrite as soon as, well, the, the patch has to go. As soon as the new version comes out with a better fix or with a, a more general one. And that's a real big downside uh, and a big word of caution for patching packages locally. I think it's a really good way to say, okay, here's a bug fix. Uh, I submit an issue. I want to have my app up and running, but it might can cause problems later on. And I fall for that myself too. Like I submitted bug fixes and uh, issues, uh, I created them and was like, okay, I'll fix that. And then people were like, hey, no, we should fix this in another package. No, there and so on, so on. So that can happen. Is it a problem? Only if you do it frequently, like you should patch it, well, rarely, right? If there's a bug that stops your app from working, totally makes sense. Go for it, but always keep in mind that it might end up differently than you intended or thought about it. And that's it. Now we've seen how to patch packages manually. It's a good starting point, but then you should use patch packages in NPM and Yarn 1 or the native commands that we've seen in BUN, PNPM and Yarn 2 and above. Questions left about patching packages, bring them up down there. Let me know if you like more general JavaScript, TypeScript, and web development content. Uh, and definitely have a look at all the other videos on the channel. And check out latest DJV episode where Michael and I talk about view use and our favorite use composables. Thanks a lot for joining everybody. Stay tuned. Happy hacking.